Hey everyone, it's Joe here. Uh, here today to give you my six week post VSG follow up as well as some information uh, if you're looking to have VSG on uh, what your diet progression will look like and what you can eat after VSG surgery. So stick around and we'll get into it. I just wanted to let you guys know if you haven't been following along yet, I started my journey at 284 pounds. That's when I started my uh, pre-op liquid diet. I today weighed in at 243 pounds. Uh, so that puts me down 41 pounds since I started my uh, journey. Uh, my surgery weight, for those wondering, was 270 pounds. So I've lost 27 pounds since surgery. And like I said, this is my six-week follow-up. As far as my six week follow up, I saw both the surgeon and dietitian today for my uh, follow up and they were both very pleased at the amount of weight that I lost and how I'm progressing through. Uh, I did sit down with the surgeon uh, first. He actually told me that they sent my stomach, the part that they uh, removed, out to be biopsied, uh, which I didn't know they were going to do. Uh, when they did biopsy, it, it turns out I have, I believe what he said was H. pylori disease. Um, and so that's some stuff I'm gonna go look up on. Uh, essentially what it is, is it's a disease in the stomach that actually causes uh, heartburn, acid reflux, and also will give you, um, can give you ulcers. I um, think he said it's pretty common actually, about 25% of the population in the US actually has this disease. Um, but for a sleeve patient, acid reflux is really bad. Uh, if you do have a lot of acid reflux, uh, normally you wouldn't get a vertical sleeve gastrectomy. You would probably go a gastric bypass or maybe a dual adenal switch, something like that. So when they find it, they treat it pretty aggressively. So they've uh, called in an antibiotic and also heartburn medication. So they treat it with those two things. I'll be on that for two weeks. Afterwards, we should be in the clear, should be good to go. Um, it'll take care of all that and we won't have to really worry about um, acid reflux, heartburn, stuff like that anymore. I did tell them that I'd had a couple of cases of acid reflux since my surgery. Uh, it's happened to me twice. Uh, not very much. It you know woke me up in the middle of the night, obviously. Uh, the other thing was heartburn. Heartburn was something I'd been uh, having, but not really like, I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain. Like I'll have it for a few moments and then it's just gone. Um, and it's not even nothing uh, that's really painful or anything. It's just something I've noticed. Um, so it's at least enough to get my attention, but not really like I didn't go running for Tums or any heartburn medication or anything like that. Uh, but I did bring it up with them because it, it's not anything I had pre-surgery. So, uh, but this H. pylori um, that he was talking about, and if I'm pronouncing it wrong, I apologize. We're kind of talking pretty fast inside the uh, the room with the surgeon there, but it's something that happens. And when it happens, you know, it can cause a lot of these things. Like I said, acid reflux, heartburn, and it can develop ulcers as well. So. We'll get that taken care of. Um, as far as uh, the rest of the stuff in there, uh, they're very happy with the way my diet's progressing uh, as far as the surgeon's concerned. And it is time for me to go ahead and start exercising more and lifting weights. Uh, and I had kind of a, a just a, a conflict with the dietitian because uh, the surgeon's like, yeah, I'm very excited to get out to start lifting weights. And then the dietitian's like, well, don't really lift weights. Don't lift heavy and stuff like that. And it's like, well, Guys, get on the same page because I didn't even know what you want me to do. So she says lifting weights is fine, but don't neglect the cardio. So we'll try to get out and walk a little more this week. Uh, try to get, you know, work's just been really busy. So, you know, I, obviously I don't need a lunch hour anymore because it, you know, I'm eating a very small amount. Uh, so I've been trying to get out and go walk during uh, my lunch hour, but it just really, it hasn't panned out. It's just been too busy. Uh, we've been dealing with kind of a crisis in one of our offices with a pretty hasty move we had to pull off and stuff like that. So uh, it's just, you know, hasn't been possible and that's life. You're not always going to have a perfect week of working out or anything, but it's got to be in the front of your mind to make sure that you get it done. So we're going to start with that. Um, I've got weights in the basement so I can go lift weights there and, you know, do that for a half hour instead of watching a, another episode of Ozark or something like that. So, um, but we'll, you know, start that up this week and, you know, keep that up and see what the weight loss looks like at that point. Uh, as far as fluids getting in, I'm getting in 60, 80 ounces, uh, like I mentioned in my last video. Um, and the 80 ounces is definitely helping out. I feel, um, I, I say I feel a little better. Um, but also I can notice, you know, the, you know, when I urinate, it's clear and all that good stuff, which is all good signs of hydration. Uh, so I'm going to keep that up. Uh, it has helped with the weight loss. I lost another three pounds this week. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that and we'll kind of keep going. 
Uh, and so that was really, that was most of what came out of my, um, my uh, surgeon uh, visit. Uh, with the dietitian. the one thing that did come out is she wants me to cut out, um, so I had been doing three meals and then a protein shake, and she wants me to cut one of those meals out, basically count the protein shake as a meal, um, and just have that. So three meals a day, one of them will be a protein shake. Um, I'm not gonna be able to hit my protein goals in doing that, and she said, for right now, that's absolutely fine. As she goes, because over time, as she explained, is my stomach's going to expand and I'll be able to eat that. And our brains are functioning in such a way that it'll take a while before I become protein deficient or start losing lean, lean body mass. Uh, she said, you know, you're not going to lose muscle by hitting 60 grams instead of 80 grams over the first few weeks of your surgery and, and your eating and stuff like that. So I will do that. I'm just going to have my protein shake in the morning now and then I'll have my protein for lunch and uh, protein, probably a little bit of vegetables for dinner. So that's the plan going forward um, for right now. So uh, I did want to tell you guys, for the guys that are watching and kind of trying to figure out what you can eat after uh, vertical sleep gastrectomy, I was going to go through my uh, diet plan. And the reason why is today is veggie day for me. Uh, what I mean by that is I've hit six weeks. And so now, very excited, which I didn't think I would be this excited over vegetables, but I can actually start adding in non-starchy vegetables to what I'm eating. Uh, so uh, milestone for me, I guess, um, but it's pretty cool. But as far as the diet itself, uh, just so you guys know, uh, week one after your VSG surgery is liquid diet. So you're back on your protein shakes, you're back on you know popsicles, uh, broths, protein broth, stuff like that. So that's your first week. And to be honest with you, it sounds daunting, but that first week I can remember not really wanting to eat anything the first few days anyway. So really, by the time you get back to it, it's, uh, it's a couple days, um, at least it was for me, before I would really want anything to eat. Um, week one to week six is where I had, I've had some struggles in there. So week one to week six is soft protein diet. And uh, what that consists of for me is lean meat like turkey and chicken and also beans. So anything that's kind of a protein source like that. Uh, other good things that you can have on it are yogurt, uh, so Greek yogurt and uh, cottage cheese. Cottage cheese was really my go-to for a while for breakfast because a half cup of that is 13 grams of protein. And it's a softer food so you can get in more of it. And so it really helped out with your protein goals. Um, and, and so that's kind of why I leaned on. The yogurt was the same way. I've just, uh, this past week, I think, I've started eating Greek yogurt. Um, that's good as well. Uh, my dietitian did tell me kind of cut that in half, even though it's a good source of protein. Uh, don't really, the mushy foods are, are kind of, uh, you have to be cautious of them because they, you fill up on them, but since they're mushy, you don't really feel yourself filling up on them and it can slow your weight loss. So just kind of, I will keep that in mind going through. Uh, but like I said, week one to week six, that's what you're looking at. Eggs, chicken, turkey, beans, any kind of soft protein, lentils, for example, those are good as well. Um, she did tell me I could have pork as well, but that pork needs to be cooked very soft. Uh, so if you're following me on Instagram, you guys know that I made some ribs this weekend. Um, those were kind of fall off the bone. Um, I cooked them a little more than what you would for a competition style. Um, but you know, to where they fall off the bone versus, you know, a competition style rib for my barbecue guys out there. Uh, you're supposed to be able to bite into it. The rest of the meat stays on the bone, but it comes off clean. Uh, that's really what you're looking for, for a rib, but fall off the bone makes it a lot easier to eat after your VSG. So if you overcook them a little bit, it'd be a bit easier for you to eat one. Um, the other thing she said, pork loin is really good, but once again, it's gotta be like crock pot style where it kind of comes apart and, and it's very, very soft. Otherwise it'll, it'll cause you some issues trying to digest it. Um, but that's your week one to week six, uh, six weeks to three months, which is where I am now is all the stuff you had before. Plus you get to have vegetables, which is, you know, it doesn't sound like much, but being able to mix in and have like a stir fry because it is meat and vegetables or being able to have a lettuce wrap for example uh, for a meal because you can now have those things that's what I get to look forward to here for the next few months um, that'll put me through October 31st um, which will be my three months post-surgery and then you transition to what's called regular bariatric foods where you can add in your starches so you can start having a little bit of potatoes or stuff like that 
Uh, our plan, they really don't want you having uh, potatoes and pasta and breads uh, until you're past six months because the most weight you'll lose is the three to six month period. And so they don't run us really having that stuff, but stuff like maybe a sweet potato or some of the starchier vegetables you can actually have. So um, unfortunately, I understand that uh, that puts me at Halloween three months out. And I looked in my book, I looked very hard, probably four or five, six times through the entire nutrition section. Um, I couldn't find anywhere where it said it was okay to eat Halloween candy. Um, so I, I guess I'll miss out on that, but <laughs> I guess the weight loss will be worth it. So, uh, uh, but that's it. As far as your diet, that's kind of what my plan is. Um, I would encourage you to watch some other videos, check with your surgeons if you're, you know, starting this process, because I have seen that a lot of the dietitian, um, or nutrition requirements are different depending on which program you're in. So just kind of keep that in mind, uh, what my surgeon and nutritionist say, uh, for our program may be different than what your nutritionist and your surgeon says for your program. Um, and you'll find a lot of that throughout. It's just one of those things to where it's like you would think this would be relatively the same across all platforms. But realistically, you know, I've seen people eating uh, foods the night before surgery, never had to do a pre-op liquid diet. And then, you know, they're back eating eggs the next day. Um, I've seen some people already eating red meat. That's something our practice doesn't want us doing. Um, Full disclosure, I've had some ground beef, some taco meat, stuff like that. We don't cook separate meals for me, so it is what it is. Um, I've lived, uh, I'll be fine. Um, I can tell you that I've tried a piece of fajita meat and that didn't go down well. So, you know, red meat may be a bit of an issue, but you will see that, like I said, all over the place to where people, you know, the diets and everything for these different programs are very different. Uh, once again, my surgeons want us eating three times a day and that's it. Uh, I've seen others where they say eat five small meals a day, uh, some focus on protein, some focus on calories. It's really just been all over the place. But um, I think that's, you know, as far as the the movement of the foods, you can expect something similar to where you're starting off with liquids, then going something very soft, then going to something a bit harder and, you know, kind of progressing from there. All right, guys, that's my six week post out follow up. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget, uh, if you would hit that like, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you soon.